What's up everyone, this is your boy Chris back with another reptile video. In today's video, I decided to answer your questions again um, about the hassling. I know there are a lot of people who are just getting started with their very first project for their, their leopard geckos. And when you just don't know what you need to prepare for your newborn hassling, here's a video on my personal tips for your hassling leopard geckos. So the first things that you need is the enclosure for your leopard geckos. I don't really recommend having the hassling together with the others because I heard there's a lot of stories where others could eat the hasslings. They don't really recognize their babies a lot. And so always get them separate. Leopard geckos like to be independent all the time. So have them separate for the housing. And also for the enclosure, I would like to have you have some kind of where, where they can reach out all the resources at the same time. If you have a big enclosure for the things, it's kind of hard for them to find the food and stay hide, do all of those things, drinking water and all those things. It will stress them out. So keep your enclosures small, not too small, but somewhat this size. Two hand size is perfect. You don't have to get this type of tub. You can use like plastic enclosure or glass enclosure. Long as you can provide them a belly heat, then you should be all good. After you get the tub or any of the enclosure, let's say for example, if you have a tub, I would like to recommend to make a hole on the side. Right here, you see those holes. And I also made a couple holes here as well. This will allow the fresh air to consistently in and out so that the hatching is always breathing the fresh airs. And also there's a lot of odors from poops and from insects. So it is always good to have these insulations. The more you have, it is better. Uh, but one thing that you need to know is make sure your substrate is always wet so that they're always hydrated. And first couple of days, make sure your substrate is wet all the time because they need to shed in the next couple of days, which which is somewhere around three, four days. That's when they start shedding and poop. Those are two things that I mainly look for before I feed them. Until then, I wouldn't feed anything. I wouldn't even place any dish. This is what I will just have for them and some waters on the side and wet kitchen towels on the floor. You don't have to use a kitchen towel, you can use equal earth, but I mainly like to go with the kitchen towel because they're pretty easy to replace and clean. So I like to go with the kitchen towel and hide for them to hide. And around three, four days, first three, four days, you will start seeing them shedding and seeing them poop. And once you see those two things, then that's when you place the mealworm dish in the tub. And if you put mealworm dish, um, some geckos will not likely to recognize what it is. So I mainly go for hand feeding for the first time to get them know what the food is. But most likely, a lot of leopard geckos will eventually eat them when they're hungry. So that should be all good there. And for the mealworms, you need to dust calcium and uh, vitamins every single day. That's what I like to do. It's This is my personal thing. Um, so that they are getting full nutrition while they're eating the food. Yeah, and you just keep it like this. Provide the belly hit every single day. This will be going into my rec system, so it won't be a big of deal for me since belly, belly hit is the main important part for me. Um, yeah, and all of my hatchlings are doing perfectly fine from there. And Every once in a while, the hatchlings will have a waste compiled in the one area. And if if it's too dirty, if it's compiled too much in the one space, it will not really going to be good for them. So maybe every two weeks or three weeks, that's when I will tr try to replace the substrates for my hatchlings. But yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. Um, if you are working on this new project for your very first leopard geckos, uh, it's going to be very exciting fun for you and see a lot of cool things. But this one right here, she, she is a mix between the total eclipse and blank nights. And that's why she's so dark. She's highly likely going to be black night snow and had eclipse. Uh, but I will keep, I will consistently have to shit because 
usually black knight genetics in the beginning although they look super dark if they have some patterns they could always change after each shed so when you get the hatchlings and the patterns that they produce on their skin in the very first couple of days it's not actually going to stay forever every every time they shed they will consistently change slightly slightly and later at the end they might be darker. For example, if it's a dark hatchling like this, they could be dark or they could be light. You just don't know. You'll have to consistently watch them and how they change. But every time when they shed, that's when they ch start changing their colors and patterns. So there's my tip there and hope this video helped you guys. And if you like this video, make sure you like this video and subscribe my channel for other type of contents. But thank you for watching my video until now and I'll see you guys in the next video. Gecko.